What if you could naturally supercharge your testosterone? No needles, no illegal shortcuts. I asked myself this question when I noticed my energy and drive weren't what they used to be. As someone who has never used steroids or TRT, I embarked on a personal journey to see just how much I could boost my testosterone through lifestyle alone. This is my journey, backed by science, free of bro science, and 100% focused on natural optimization. My goal for this video is for you to learn everything regarding natural testosterone optimization, and if you stick around until the end, I guarantee that you will look and feel better. What is testosterone and why does it matter so much? Testosterone is the key hormone that drives muscle growth, energy, confidence, and sex drive. When your levels are high, you build muscle easier, burn fat faster, and feel sharp. But as you age, testosterone naturally declines, dropping 1-2% to per year after 30. That might not sound like much, but over time, it adds up. A man in his 20s might sit around 600 nanograms per deciliter, but by his 40s or 50s, that could drop below 400. And trust me, you feel the difference. Low T can mean fatigue, brain fog, low libido, and poor recovery. But here's the good news. Your lifestyle plays a massive role in where your levels land. With the right habits, you can raise your testosterone naturally, even reversing the age-related drop. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do it, starting with the foundation and then leveling up with advanced strategies backed by real science. Let's start with some fundamental habits for higher testosterone. In this phase, we focus on lifestyle fundamentals, the habits that form the base of your testosterone pyramid. These made the biggest difference in my own journey. Think of these as the cake, and any fancy supplements as just icing. Without the cake, the icing won't do much. First, you need to prioritize quality sleep. One study found that just one week of sleeping five hours a night dropped testosterone in healthy young men by 10 to 15 percent, the same decline you'd expect from 10 to 15 years of aging. That hit me hard. I used to sleep five to six hours thinking I was grinding, but I was actually tanking my tea every night. Testosterone is made during deep sleep, especially early in the morning. That's why it peaks when you wake up. Less sleep, less tea. Simple as that. Once I committed to seven to nine hours consistently, everything changed. More energy, better mood, and yes, higher libido. I didn't need pills, I just needed rest. Bottom line, sleep is the cheapest, most effective testosterone booster you're probably ignoring. Protect it as your gains depend on it, because they do. Let's move on to nutrition for hormonal health. When I started my journey, I was eating low fat everything, lean protein, tons of veggies, and barely any fat. Big mistake. Testosterone is literally made from cholesterol and dietary fats. Research shows men on low-fat diets often have significantly lower testosterone. In fact, some saw drops of 20 to 25 percent just by cutting fat too low. So I revamped my diet, added whole eggs, olive oil, avocados, and nuts, and stopped fearing red meat. I still included carbs in my diet since cutting them too low can increase cortisol, but I prioritized healthy fats to support overall balance. I also dropped around 15 pounds of body fat slowly over time. Why? Because belly fat turns testosterone into estrogen. One Harvard study showed that a 4-inch increase in waist size raised the risk of low T by 75%. The result? Better mood, more energy, and improved gym performance. Science backs it too. Losing fat and eating a nutrient-dense, fat-inclusive diet can raise testosterone by up to 50% in overweight men. In short, eat whole foods, don't cut fats too low, and lose excess belly fat. The results might surprise you. How exercise boosts testosterone? If there's one natural testosterone booster you've probably heard of, it's weightlifting. And yes, strength training really does help raise T levels, when done right. Let's clear up a common myth that intense lifting lowers testosterone. That's only true if you're chronically overtraining without rest. In reality, properly programmed resistance training is one of the most effective ways to increase testosterone, both short and long term. One study found a 21.6% testosterone boost just 30 minutes after lifting. While that's a temporary spike, consistent training leads to lasting benefits. In fact, long-term strength programs in previously sedentary men 
raised both testosterone and DHT significantly. When I hit a low point in my own T levels, I realized my workouts were too light. Lots of high reps, isolation exercises, and a not enough challenge. So I made the switch to compound lifts, squats, deadlifts, presses, and focus on progressive overload. I trained three to four days per week, kept sessions under an hour, and prioritized recovery. I also added hit once or twice a week. Short sprints on a bike or track can give you another T-boosting stimulus, especially when paired with strength training. And I didn't ditch cardio altogether. Daily brisk walks and light jogging kept me lean without overdoing it. Here's the key. Lift heavy, especially with leg exercises like squats. Focus on form and progression. Train consistently, not sporadically. Recover well. Sleep, eat, and manage stress. Bonus, muscle mass itself helps support hormone balance and insulin sensitivity. And yes, I actually felt the change. More energy, confidence, and a drive, both in and out of the gym. Lifting weights sends your body a clear message. We need testosterone. So send the signal often, but smartly, and watch what happens. What is cortisol and how to manage it? This phase of the journey, it was more mental than physical. I had a demanding job constant pressure, and zero stress management tools. And that mattered more than I realized, because chronic stress is a testosterone killer. When your body is flooded with cortisol, also called the stress hormone, testosterone takes a back seat. Cortisol is about survival, while testosterone is about thriving. And if your brain thinks you're in crisis 24-7, it won't prioritize muscle building or libido. It's just trying to keep you alive. I learned this the hard way. My T levels were stuck low and my energy was in the gutter. So I made some changes. 10 minutes of morning meditation, deep breathing breaks at work, less caffeine cut from four cups to one to two, no later than 2 p.m., no more doom scrolling before bed, just a book or light stretching, more time outside, more laughs, and a lot more calm. It felt awkward at first, but these habits seriously worked. I was less moody, slept better, and felt more centered. And studies confirm it. High cortisol levels suppress testosterone production. I also cut back on alcohol. One to two drinks max. Never heavy sessions. Why? Because alcohol increases estrogen, taxes your liver, and messes with hormones. By the end of phase one sleep, diet, training, and stress, I felt like a different person. My testosterone jumped from 350 nanograms per deciliter to over 600 nanograms per deciliter. That's a life-changing difference. I felt more driven, stronger, and sharper. Like I hit rewind on aging. And the crazy part? That was just the beginning. Now I wanted to push the edge. How far could I go naturally? Welcome to phase two, advanced natural strategies. After handling the big rocks, I looked into every evidence-based natural hack or supplement that might provide an additional boost. I was already doing as much as I could with lifestyle, so any further improvement would likely be smaller. But I was curious and motivated. Here's what I explored and what the science says. How to optimize key vitamins and minerals. Two key micronutrients can make or break your testosterone levels, vitamin D and zinc. Let's start with vitamin D, also called the sunshine vitamin. It's technically a hormone, and if you're deficient, your testosterone can take a major hit. I was low around 20 nanograms per milliliter and started supplementing with 3000 IU of D3 daily. Within a few months, my levels rose into the optimal range and my testosterone followed. One study even showed a 25% T-boost in men who were vitamin D deficient just from supplementing. Then there's zinc, crucial for testosterone production in the testes. I wasn't getting enough from my diet, so I added a 30 milligram daily supplement. The science is wild. Older men doubled their tea levels after six months of zinc. I also started eating more beef and pumpkin seeds. Whether placebo or not, I felt stronger, recovered faster, and let's just say, performance improved across the board. Bonus tips. Magnesium can support better sleep. I took 400 milligrams at night. Omega-3s via fish or fish oil help reduce inflammation, indirectly supporting hormone health. If you're low in vitamin D or zinc, Fixing that can move your T from low to normal to optimal. I went from 600s to high 700s nanograms per deciliter 
with these tweaks. No drugs, no gimmicks. Now let's move on to some. Herbal and natural supplements. Walk into any supplement store and you'll see shelves stacked with testosterone boosters. Names like Testomax and Alpha Rage screaming for attention. But most of them? Just hype. I did my homework and found that the majority of these so-called tea boosters are packed with underdosed herbs and proprietary blends that do next to nothing. That said, a few natural compounds actually do have real science behind them. One of the most promising I came across was ashwagandha. It's an adaptogenic herb, traditionally used to help the body manage stress. And since high cortisol levels can suppress testosterone, it made sense that something that lowers stress might help indirectly. But it goes further than that. Clinical studies have shown ashwagandha can directly increase testosterone levels too. I started taking 600 milligrams of high-quality KSM-66 ashwagandha daily, and within a couple of months, I noticed a real difference. I had more energy, felt more balanced, and slept better. One study showed a 14-15% to increase in testosterone for men taking it. Nothing extreme, but enough to matter, and for me, it also brought back that sense of drive and vigor. It wasn't a miracle pill, but it helped, especially once I already had my sleep, diet, and workouts dialed in. Along the way, I explored a few other options. Fenugreek had some studies suggesting it might boost free testosterone and libido. Creatine, which I was already using for strength gains, may slightly raise DHT levels, another important androgen. Even though it's not a direct testosterone booster, it helped me train harder, and that matters. I skipped over DHEA since it's technically a hormone, and I wanted to keep everything 100% natural. Now, I also avoided some trendy ingredients like Tonga Ali and Fidogia Agrestis. You'll hear people rave about them online, but there just isn't enough solid research yet to justify taking them, especially when safety and long-term effects are still unclear. I was focused on optimizing naturally within my genetic potential not chasing risky shortcuts or playing chemist with untested compounds. And of course, I stayed far away from SARMs or anything in the gray area of performance enhancers. Those might boost numbers fast, but they come with serious health risks, and they're not part of a sustainable or natural plan. So in the end, ashwagandha was one of the very few supplements I felt was worth adding, not for a miracle fix, but for the extra 10% once the foundation was already solid. When combined with proper sleep, nutrition, training, and stress management, it helped me push to the upper end of my natural testosterone range safely and sustainably. Now let's put all this together. By the end of my experiment, I went from feeling like a 6 out of 10 to a solid 9 out of 10. My final testosterone reading came back just over 800 nanograms per deciliter, high to normal for a young, healthy man. But what mattered most wasn't the number, it was how I felt. Stronger in the gym, sharper mentally, more energized, and overall just me again. No shortcuts, no banned substances, just habits, consistency, and a few smart supplements. Now, let's talk about what's realistic for you, because everyone's baseline and genetics are different. If you're a young guy, 18 to 30, and you're already healthy, your T level might sit around 600 to 700 nanograms per deciliter. With great habits, maybe you push that to 800 to 900, but you're not going to 1500 naturally. That's steroid territory. However, if you're out of shape and sleeping poorly, you could be at 300 to 400. In that case, lifestyle changes might literally double your T and transform how you feel. For men in their 40s and 50s, T levels often dip to the 400s but many have naturally brought them back up to the 600 to 700 range by getting leaner, sleeping better, and lifting again. You might not feel 21, but you can feel 30 again, and that's huge. For guys 60 and up, some decline is normal, but you still have control. The fitter you are, the slower T declines. I've seen 60-year-olds with higher levels than some 30-year-olds, simply because they took care of themselves. Your lifestyle is the most important lever you have. Every choice you make, what you eat, how you move, how you sleep, sends a signal, and your hormones respond. Show your body you're thriving, and it will reward you. Show it you're stressed and surviving, and it will shut things down. Your testosterone is a mirror of your habits. Upgrade your habits, and everything changes.
Let's quickly bust a few common myths because if this is going to be a best video on testosterone, we need to set the record straight. You can't significantly raise testosterone without steroids. False. You've seen my journey and the science. Many men have raised their T levels by hundreds of points with lifestyle changes alone. Sure, steroids can take you beyond natural limits, but if you're sitting at the low or mid range, you can absolutely climb to your natural peak. Lifting weights lowers testosterone. Completely false. Proper strength training boosts testosterone. Only extreme overtraining without recovery might lower it, and that's avoidable. For most men, regular resistance training leads to higher testosterone and growth hormone levels. Eating fat is bad for hormones. Actually, low-fat diets can hurt testosterone. Your body needs healthy fats to produce hormones. This doesn't mean eating junk food. It means including quality fats like avocados, eggs, olive oil, and fatty fish. Balanced whole food diets are best. And no, you don't need zero carbs. Moderate carbs help control cortisol, which supports T. You're too old. Low T is just part of aging. Age affects hormones, but it's not an excuse. A fit, healthy 70-year-old can have better testosterone than an unhealthy 50-year-old. Optimizing lifestyle works at any age, and if your habits have been off, improvements can make a dramatic difference, even if you're in your 60s or 70s. Supplement X will skyrocket your T overnight. Unlikely. Most commercial test boosters are hype. Stick to evidence-based essentials. Vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, if deficient, ashwagandha, maybe fenugreek, and of course, a good diet. No supplement replaces solid habits. Skip the flashy proprietary blends, they're not the magic solution. If you want to learn which are the best and worst exercises for each muscle group, make sure to watch the next video.